In this video, I am going to show you how you can set up a production ready Kubernetes cluster at home using code with KubeSpray and Ansible. You might already be thinking about moving your home lab applications to a distributed platform like Kubernetes, but are still reluctant to deal with the complexities involved with setting up and maintaining a Kubernetes cluster. Today, I will show you how you can set up and run maintenance tasks on your Kubernetes cluster in a simple, declarative, and reproducible way. Hi, my name is Morris. I make videos on DevOps and Kubernetes. If you're interested in this kind of content, leave a like and consider subscribing for more. In this project, we are going to set up a fresh Kubernetes cluster, set custom configuration options, upgrade the Kubernetes cluster version, and finally see how to add or remove nodes from the cluster. Let us first go through the requirements we will need to complete our project. Like I mentioned in the intro, the two main tools we will use today are KubeSpray and Ansible. KubeSpray is an open source tool that provides an easy way to deploy and manage Kubernetes clusters. It is a collection of Ansible playbooks that automate the installation and configuration of Kubernetes, as well as related components such as etcd, Calicol, MetalLB, and much more. Ansible is an open source automation and configuration management tool. It can help simplify the management and configuration of Linux servers. It allows you to define the desired configuration state of your servers through a declarative language. This will not be a deep dive into how Ansible works, but if you're not already familiar with Ansible, by the end of this video, you will have a basic understanding of how it works. The third thing we will need, of course, is a set of Linux servers which will make up our Kubernetes cluster. These could be bare metal servers or VMs, depending on the resources you have in your home lab. I have already set up a group of five Debian-based VMs in Proxmox, but feel free to use any virtualization software you are comfortable with. You can also choose any Linux distro you like, as KubeSpray has support for many distros. All you have to do now is simply to do a fresh installation on all your VMs with no additional packages installed. You also have to make sure you can SSH into the VMs using SSH keys as this will make it easier for Ansible to connect your VMs without requiring a password. So now that we have all the prerequisites for our project, we can go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is create our project directory on our local machine and clone the KubeSpray project into that directory. You may also refer to the official documentation, which has much more information as well as a quick start guide you can follow. The next thing we're going to do is install Ansible on our machine. Please take note to install it according to the KubeSpray Ansible installation guide. If you already have Ansible running on your machine, you will need to uninstall it first to avoid any issues. To install Ansible the right way, we'll create a Python virtual environment, which we activate using the source command. Once inside of the Python virtual environment, we can use the Python pip module to install Ansible using the requirements file included in the KubeSpray directory. Now it is time to build our inventory. In Ansible, an inventory file is a list of hosts or systems that Ansible can manage. It provides information about the managed nodes such as their host names, IP addresses, and connection details. To build the inventory, first we declare an array called IPs containing a list of all the IP addresses of our VMs. We can also create a cluster directory called homelab k8 where we'll save all configuration files for this particular cluster. If we wish to create additional clusters later on, we can also use the same KubeSpray project directory and simply create other cluster subdirectories. We can now generate the inventory file by specifying the location of the inventory file, the IPs array, and the inventory Python script. Let's take a peek at the newly created host.yaml inventory file in the home lab case directory. We can see our VMs are added to the inventory as nodes and assigned groups like cube control plane and cube node. From here, we can already see which nodes will have which roles and you are free to edit this file and change up the roles as you see fit. 
One last thing before we are ready to fire up Ansible and deploy our cluster is we can set up some custom configuration options for our cluster. Kubespray has a vast array of configurable options. If you dive down into the Kubespray folder and find the k8cluster.yaml file, you can see a lot of default options that will be configured by Kubespray. This allows you to have granular control on how your cluster is deployed, and the best part of all of it is that all these settings can be altered even after installation by running an upgrade. I will demonstrate setting up a couple of options by creating a clusterconfig.yaml file and set the cluster name to homelab.k8 and change the default Kubernetes version from 1.26 to 1.25. With that set, we are now ready to deploy. From within the kubespray directory, we can run the ansible playbook command to execute the cluster.yaml playbook to provision a fresh Kubernetes cluster. An ansible playbook is a file that defines a series of tasks and configurations to be executed on nodes in the inventory. We use the dash i option in the ansible playbook command to specify an inventory file and the dash e option to use the extra variables contained in the cluster-config.yaml file which will configure our custom options. We then specify a server login user and use become and become root to allow for privilege escalation. Executing this command will go ahead and deploy our Kubernetes cluster. This will take some time depending on the number of nodes you are deploying to. When completed, you should be able to see a summary of the installation in the Ansible Play Recap. And that's it. We now have a fresh, production-ready Kubernetes cluster. We can check that everything installed correctly by SSHing into the first node in our inventory, which is one of the control plane nodes. If we run the kubectl get nodes command as root, we can see that our cluster running version 1.25 is in a ready state. We can also do a kubectl get pods in the kubesystem namespace, and we can see that all our control plane components are up and running. You can also check the etc kubernetes admin.com file for the kubeconfig file, which you can set up locally on your machine to easily access the cluster. Now, during the lifetime of our cluster, we want to make sure that the cluster is always healthy and we might need to make some configuration changes from time to time. And of course, we can do this as well with Kubespray by applying the upgrade cluster playbook. Let us try this out by changing our Kubernetes cluster version to 1.26 in the cluster config file. We can then execute the same Ansible playbook command only this time with the upgrade cluster playbook. Once the upgrade is done, we can verify this again by SSHing into the first node and executing a kubectl get nodes. And we can see that we have successfully upgraded our cluster version. As our applications grow, we might need to grow our cluster as well by adding new nodes, replacing smaller nodes, or removing malfunctioning nodes. To remove a node, we use the remove node playbook and specify the node to remove with dash e node. We can then execute the command and kubespray will go ahead and remove the node from the cluster. Let us check to see that the node has been removed. And we can see from the kubectl get nodes output that the node has indeed been removed. After a node has been successfully removed, you will need to remove it from the host.yaml inventory file too. I'm not going to remove node 5 here since I want to show you how you can add a node to the cluster. Once you have set up a new VM, you simply edit the host.yaml file and add the details of the new node. Here, let us assume that this node 5 has just been added to the inventory. To add a new node or nodes, we use the scale playbook. We can also use the dash dash limit option to limit the operation to node 5 to avoid disturbing the other nodes in the cluster. We can then execute the command and kubespray will go ahead and add the node back to the cluster. We can also verify that the node has been added, which we can check using the kubectl get nodes command again. And once again, everything has run and completed successfully. Hopefully, you now have a good understanding on how you can set up a Kubernetes cluster with Kubespray. I'll have all the commands and config files that we use today linked in the description, so you can quickly get started deploying in your own environment too.
If you found any value in this video, leave a like and please consider subscribing for more Kubernetes tutorials. Once again, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.